I'm Mike Wallace. I'm Morley Safer. I'm Harry Reasoner. I'm Ed Bradley. I'm Steve Croft. I'm Meredith Vieira. Those stories and Andy Rooney tonight on 60 Minutes. 60 Minutes is an acclaimed American television news magazine broadcast on CBS. Premiering in 1968, it has become one of the most respected and longest running programs in television history. Known for its investigative journalism, 60 Minutes delivers in-depth reporting on a wide range of topics, from politics and business to science and culture. The show's format features multiple segments, each focusing on a particular story presented by seasoned correspondents. Over the decades, it has earned numerous awards, including Peabody's and Emmys, for its incisive and impactful storytelling. The hallmark ticking stopwatch, synonymous with the show, symbolizes its relentless pursuit of the truth. By combining rigorous journalism with compelling narratives, 60 Minutes continues to engage and inform millions of viewers, maintaining its reputation as a pillar of broadcast journalism. Nevertheless, it's had its controversies that we just can't forget about. Keep watching Factsverse to learn more about them. When the timer began ticking, 60 Minutes is a pioneering American television news magazine broadcast on CBS that has become a hallmark of investigative journalism. Since its debut on September 24, 1968, the show has redefined television news reporting with its innovative format and rigorous journalistic standards. Created by Don Hewitt, a legendary CBS News producer, 60 Minutes set out to blend the storytelling techniques of television documentaries with the urgency and directness of traditional news reporting. Origins and Format Innovation The origins of 60 Minutes trace back to Don Hewitt's vision of creating a news program that was both informative and engaging. Hewitt, who had a rich background in television news production, sought to produce a show that could explore multiple stories in depth within a single broadcast. The idea was to break away from the conventional half-hour evening news format, which often skimmed over complex issues due to time constraints. The format of 60 Minutes is structured around several segments, each approximately 15 minutes long, allowing for comprehensive coverage of each story. This multi-segment format was revolutionary at the time and remains a defining characteristic of the show. The segments typically include investigative reports, interviews, profiles, and features on various topics, from politics and business to science, technology, and culture. One of the most iconic elements of 60 Minutes is its ticking stopwatch, introduced by Hewitt as a symbol of the relentless pursuit of truth and the passage of time. This simple yet powerful visual has become synonymous with the show and its commitment to in-depth journalism. Early Challenges and Breakthroughs 60 Minutes faced several challenges in its early years. Initially, the show struggled to find its audience, partly due to its unconventional format. However, the show's turning point came in the early 1970s when it began to gain traction with viewers and critics alike. The Watergate scandal and other major news events provided fertile ground for 60 Minutes to demonstrate its investigative prowess and solidify its reputation. The show's breakthrough came with hard-hitting stories and exclusive interviews that captured national attention. Notable early segments included Mike Wallace's interviews with controversial figures and Morley Safer's reports on the Vietnam War which showcased the show's ability to tackle complex and contentious issues. Key figures and memorable segments. Over the decades, 60 Minutes has been home to some of the most respected journalists in the industry. Mike Wallace, Morley Safer, Ed Bradley, Harry Reasoner, and Andy Rooney are just a few of the notable correspondents who have contributed to the show's legacy. Each brought their unique style and perspective, helping to shape the program's identity. Mike Wallace, known for his aggressive interviewing style, became a cornerstone of 60 Minutes. His interviews with figures such as Ayatollah Khomeini and Vladimir Putin are remembered for their directness and depth. Morley Safer's reporting from Vietnam, which exposed the harsh realities of the war, is credited with influencing public opinion and showcasing the power of television journalism. Ed Bradley's work, including his coverage of the AIDS crisis and groundbreaking interviews with cultural icons like Michael Jackson, further expanded the show's scope and influence. Andy Rooney's closing essays, which offered witty and insightful commentary on everyday life, became a beloved feature of the program. International versions. The success of 60 Minutes in the United States has inspired several international versions, each adapting the format to suit their own audience while maintaining the core principles of in-depth reporting and investigative journalism. Notable international adaptations include 60 Minutes Australia. Launched in 1979, this version has become a staple of Australian television, known for its investigative reports and exclusive interviews. 60 Minutes New Zealand. This adaptation has also garnered a strong following, focusing on stories of national and international significance. 60 Minutes Germany. Known as 60 Minuten, the German version similarly emphasizes in-depth reporting and has carved out its niche in the German media landscape. 60 Minutes India. Although shorter-lived, the Indian adaptation aimed to bring the rigorous standards of the original to Indian audiences. These international versions have helped to spread the influence of 60 Minutes and demonstrate the universal appeal of thorough, well-produced journalism. Legacy and Impact. 
60 Minutes has left an indelible mark on the landscape of television journalism. Its pioneering format has been widely imitated, and its success has paved the way for other news magazine programs. The show's emphasis on accountability, transparency, and in-depth reporting has set a high standard for journalistic integrity. Throughout its history, 60 Minutes has received numerous awards and accolades, including multiple Peabody Awards, Emmy Awards, and a George Polk Award. These honors reflect the show's commitment to excellence and its impact on both journalism and society at large. The program's influence extends beyond its awards. 60 Minutes has played a critical role in uncovering major stories and influencing public discourse. From exposing corporate malfeasance and government corruption to highlighting social injustices and cultural phenomena, the show has consistently used its platform to inform and educate viewers. In recent years, 60 Minutes has adapted to the changing media landscape, embracing digital platforms and social media to reach a broader audience. The show continues to attract millions of viewers each week, demonstrating its enduring relevance and appeal. 60 Minutes stands as an everlasting testament to the power of investigative journalism and the enduring importance of holding the powerful accountable. Its innovative format, dedication to in-depth reporting, and ability to adapt to changing times have ensured its place as a cornerstone of broadcast journalism. As the show moves forward, it remains committed to its founding principles, continuing to deliver stories that matter, and upholding the high standards set by its creator, Don Hewitt. Of course, the show has had its ups and downs, and some of the downs have been controversies. Let's explore a few, shall we? Red Flags with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Looks like the average troll in my Twitter feed, so... I don't really care. You're used to it. I don't let name calling bother me or offend me. I just don't. The 60 Minutes interview with Marjorie Taylor Greene aired on April 2nd, 2023, sparked significant controversy and criticism due to perceived missteps in its execution and handling of the interview. The segment, which featured the Republican Congresswoman from Georgia, known for her provocative and often extreme views, was conducted by veteran journalist Leslie Stahl. However, the interview drew backlash from various quarters, including media critics, political commentators, and the general public. Marjorie Taylor Greene, a polarizing figure in American politics, is known for her outspoken support of conspiracy theories and her incendiary rhetoric. Her positions on various issues, including her endorsement of the QAnon conspiracy theory, have made her a highly contentious figure. The decision by 60 Minutes to feature Green was met with anticipation and skepticism, given her notoriety and the show's reputation for rigorous journalism. During the interview, Leslie Stahl questioned Green on a range of topics, including her views on the 2020 presidential election, her support for conspiracy theories, and her controversial statements about fellow members of Congress. One of the most contentious moments came when Stahl brought up Green's past statements, labeling Democrats using a shocking word. Green responded by doubling down on her claims, suggesting that Democrats support immoral and illegal acts due to their stance on LGBTQ plus issues. The interview was widely criticized for several reasons. Firstly, many observers felt that Leslie Stahl failed to adequately challenge Green's assertions and provide the necessary context for her claims. Critics argued that Green was given a platform to disseminate misinformation without sufficient pushback from Stahl, which risked legitimizing her extreme views. Media critic Margaret Sullivan, writing for The Washington Post, described the interview as a failure that did not meet the standards of accountability journalism. Secondly, the tone and approach of the interview were also called into question. Some viewers perceived Stahl's demeanor as overly deferential, allowing Green to dominate the conversation and present her views with minimal interruption. This perceived leniency was seen as a missed opportunity to hold Green accountable for her controversial statements and actions. The backlash was not limited to media critics. Many viewers took to social media to express their dismay, accusing 60 Minutes of prioritizing sensationalism over substantive journalism. Hash boycott 60 Minutes trended on Twitter, with users arguing that the program had compromised its integrity by providing Green with a prominent platform. In response to the criticism, CBS and 60 Minutes defended the decision to air the interview, arguing that it was important to engage with public figures regardless of how controversial they may be. The program emphasized that the goal was to expose Green's views to a wider audience, allowing viewers to make informed judgments. However, this defense did little to quell the outrage, as many believed that the segment failed to provide the necessary journalistic rigor expected from 60 Minutes. The Marjorie Taylor Green interview remains a contentious episode in the history of 60 Minutes. It serves as a reminder of the challenges faced by journalists when interviewing highly polarizing figures. The criticism highlights the delicate balance between giving a platform to controversial individuals and ensuring that their claims are rigorously examined and contextualized. 
For 60 minutes, the episode underscores the importance of maintaining high standards of accountability and editorial responsibility, especially when dealing with figures who traffic in misinformation and extremist rhetoric. The Marjorie Taylor Greene interview on 60 Minutes exemplifies the complexities and pitfalls of contemporary journalism. The controversy surrounding the segment serves as a cautionary tale for media outlets navigating the intersection of public interest and responsible reporting. The interview question she shouldn't have asked. I think... It was more when I would try to bring him back to the question I asked, and that got on his nerves a little bit. In a startling revelation, a lawsuit filed in October 2023 brought to light an incident involving Leslie Stahl, a veteran correspondent for the acclaimed news program 60 Minutes. The lawsuit, initiated by Alexandra Poulos, alleges that during a job interview for a position on the show, Stahl posed a deeply inappropriate and sexist question whether Poulos had ever used her body to get stories. Poulos, an experienced journalist with a substantial track record, detailed the incident in her legal filing, stating that the question was not only offensive, but also reflective of a broader culture of sexism within the organization. According to Poulos, Stahl's question came as a shock, given Stahl's prominent status as a respected journalist and a trailblazer for women in the industry. The lawsuit claims that such a question undermines the professional integrity of female journalists and perpetuates harmful stereotypes about women in media. The incident reportedly occurred during an interview process where Poulos was seeking a producer role at 60 Minutes. Stahl, known for her rigorous interviewing techniques and penetrating questions on air, allegedly asked Poulos if she had ever leveraged her sexuality to gain access or information for her stories. This line of questioning, Poulos argues, was not only irrelevant to her professional qualifications, but also indicative of a troubling mindset within the high-profile news program. This incident has sparked widespread criticism and prompted discussions about gender dynamics and sexism in journalism. The question posed by Stahl, whether intended seriously or as a provocative test of character, has been widely condemned as inappropriate and reflective of a systemic issue where women in media are often judged by standards unrelated to their professional capabilities. Journalists and media watchdogs have weighed in on the controversy, with many expressing disappointment in Stahl, a journalist who herself broke through many gender barriers in her career. Critics argue that such questions perpetuate a culture of misogyny and undermine efforts to achieve gender equality in newsrooms. They highlight that women in journalism are frequently subjected to scrutiny and skepticism about their professional methods and integrity, scrutiny that their male counterparts rarely face. Poulos's lawsuit also delves into broader allegations of a hostile work environment at CBS, particularly within the 60 Minutes team. She describes an environment where sexist attitudes were pervasive and where female employees often felt demeaned and undervalued. Poulos's legal complaint is not an isolated case, but rather part of a larger pattern of allegations against CBS. In recent years, the network has faced multiple accusations of fostering a toxic workplace culture, including claims of sexual harassment and discrimination. The network has responded to the lawsuit by emphasizing its commitment to a respectful and equitable workplace. However, the allegations against such a high-profile figure as Leslie Stahl underscore the ongoing challenges faced by women in the media industry. Poulos's legal action seeks not only to address her personal grievances, but also to catalyze broader institutional changes within CBS and the wider journalism industry. The implications of this lawsuit extend beyond the specific incident involving Stahl and Poulos. It raises critical questions about how women in journalism are treated and the standards to which they are held. The controversy has ignited debates on social media and in professional circles about the necessity of fostering more inclusive and respectful work environments. Poulos's case also shines a light on the need for media organizations to critically examine their internal cultures and address any entrenched biases that may exist. The public disclosure of such incidents can serve as a catalyst for change, prompting organizations to implement stricter policies against harassment and to promote gender equality more effectively. The allegations against Leslie Stahl, as described in Alexandra Poulos's lawsuit, represent a significant moment in the ongoing struggle for gender equality in journalism. They highlight the persistent issues of sexism and discrimination that women in the media industry face. As this case unfolds, it may drive further introspection and reform within media organizations, reinforcing the importance of maintaining professional standards that respect and value the contributions of all journalists, regardless of gender. The resolution of this lawsuit will likely be watched closely as a barometer of how seriously the media industry is willing to address and rectify such deeply rooted issues. Listen up. This happened on your watch. Talking to Keith Alexander a 20-something-year-old high school dropout contractor managed to walk out with, in essence, the crown jewels. On December 15, 2013, 60 Minutes aired a segment titled Inside the NSA, 
which quickly drew significant attention from both the media and viewers. The report was presented by John Miller, who had previously served as a deputy commissioner for the New York Police Department and a spokesperson for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This choice of correspondent was seen as unusual by many, given Miller's background with other intelligence agencies. The guest was with NSA Director General Keith Alexander, and the interaction between the two still gets scrutinized to this day. The segment was criticized for its seemingly lenient approach to sensitive issues, particularly the NSA's practice of bulk collecting phone record metadata from American citizens. Despite this, General Alexander, when questioned by Miller, downplayed the extent of the practice. Miller's interview style appeared to be too kind toward General Alexander, and some viewers accused Miller of helping Alexander essentially say the right thing. The media's reaction to Miller's segment on 60 Minutes was mostly negative. Many journalists, not from CBS of course, criticized the segment and felt that it was just a PR stunt to make the NSA look good. Essentially, the backlash didn't stop there. Oh no. There was another blow to the segment by a federal court ruling which occurred the very next day. In the ruling, Judge Richard Leon declared that the NSA's practices were unlawful and that under the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution were also unconstitutional. Ouch. Overall, the 60 Minutes report inside the NSA became a focal point of debate, highlighting concerns over journalistic integrity and the balance between national security and individual privacy. It was perhaps one of the early instances that Americans had of not believing everything the media tells them and believing that the media doesn't have their best interests at heart. Beating around the bush. You're not very popular in the country right now, to be frank. September 2004, 60 Minutes aired a controversial episode in which veteran journalist Dan Rather reported on President George W. Bush's military service during the Vietnam War. The segment centered on documents that purportedly revealed Bush disobeyed certain orders while in the Texas Air National Guard, allowing him to avoid deployment to Vietnam. These documents suggested Bush's record was less commendable than publicly portrayed. However, the episode quickly became a major scandal, sometimes known as Rathergate, when serious questions arose regarding the authenticity of the documents. The documents, which were said to have been typed in the early 1970s, showed signs of having been produced with modern word processing software. As doubts about the documents' legitimacy grew, CBS faced intense scrutiny and backlash from both the media and the public. An internal investigation by CBS confirmed that the network had failed to authenticate the documents adequately before airing the segment. This lapse in journalistic standards led to significant consequences within the organization. In the wake of the scandal, CBS terminated four staff members involved in the production and vetting of the report. These included Mary Mapes, the producer of the segment, and three other executives. Dan Rather, while not immediately fired, eventually resigned as anchor of the CBS Evening News in 2005, a move widely seen as a consequence of the fallout. The 60 Minutes episode not only damaged CBS's reputation, but also had a lasting impact on the credibility of investigative journalism. Critics argued that the rush to air the story without proper verification reflected a broader issue within the news industry, where the drive for sensational stories sometimes outweighs rigorous fact-checking. The incident remains a cautionary tale about the importance of accuracy and integrity in journalism. Rooney and the Looney. Did you have any idea, though, that you would become uh, iconic on this broadcast? Well, I hope you're right. I don't know whether, whether you're right or not, but I like hearing you say it. <laughs> Andy Rooney, a celebrated journalist and commentator, made over 1,000 appearances on 60 Minutes during his illustrious career, becoming a household name through his segment, A Few Minutes with Andy Rooney. Known for his curmudgeonly style and blunt opinions, Rooney frequently stirred controversy with his remarks, touching on a variety of social, political, and cultural issues. One notable instance that sparked significant viewer backlash occurred when Rooney called actor and filmmaker Mel Gibson, a wacko. This comment was made during one of his segments where Rooney, as usual, did not shy away from expressing his candid views. His harsh critique of Gibson, particularly in the context of Gibson's controversial remarks and actions, resonated with some but alienated many others. Rooney's use of the term wacko was seen as overly harsh and unprofessional by a segment of the audience, leading to a substantial number of complaints and criticism directed at both Rooney and 60 Minutes. Rooney's forthright style often landed him in hot water but it was also what made him a distinctive voice on 60 Minutes. His willingness to address contentious topics and speak his mind, regardless of the potential fallout, defined his tenure on the show. However, his bluntness sometimes crossed the line, causing discomfort and anger among viewers. The incident with Mel Gibson was a prime example of Rooney's polarizing effect. While some appreciated his honesty and straightforwardness, others felt he lacked sensitivity and decorum especially when discussing public figures and sensitive issues. Despite the controversies, Rooney's segments remained a staple of 60 Minutes until his retirement, underscoring the complex legacy of a commentator unafraid to speak his mind 
even at the risk of public ire. The big quit while you're ahead. People have been living to work for a very long time. And I think the pandemic brought that moment of reflection for everyone. Mm. What do I want to do? What makes my heart sing? In a recent 60-minute segment addressing the big quit, the mass resignation movement that surged during the COVID-19 pandemic, the show sparked controversy by seemingly siding with companies over workers. The episode focused on the challenges businesses faced due to widespread employee departures, highlighting employers' struggles to maintain operations amidst the labor shortage. Critics argued that the segment appeared to prioritize the perspectives and hardships of companies, often portraying them as victims of an unprecedented economic shift. This framing was perceived as neglecting the underlying reasons why so many workers chose to leave their jobs. Factors such as low wages, inadequate working conditions, lack of benefits, and the desire for better work-life balance were underemphasized. Instead, the narrative leaned heavily on the difficulties businesses encountered, such as staffing shortages and the impact on productivity and profits. Viewers took issue with what they saw as an imbalanced portrayal, suggesting that 60 Minutes missed an opportunity to delve deeper into the systemic issues driving the big quit. They felt the program should have given more voice to the workers' perspectives, exploring why many employees felt compelled to resign en masse and what changes they were seeking in their work environments. By focusing predominantly on the corporate angle, the segment was seen as lacking critical context and failing to address the broader socioeconomic factors at play. The backlash highlighted the ongoing debate about media representation of labor issues. Many argued that by not fully addressing the grievances and motivations of the workers, the segment fell short of providing a comprehensive view of the phenomenon. The criticism underscored the importance of balanced reporting, especially on topics with significant societal impact like the big quit, where understanding both sides of the story is crucial for an informed public discourse. Mike and the Minister. For me to register as a foreign agent is to give America control over what I say. And that's what America wants, is control over what I say. In the foreign agent law, you can't influence public opinion. That's my business, to influence public opinion, especially when liars are deceiving the American people. So no, I will never register as a foreign agent because I'm not that. Mike Wallace's interview with Minister Louis Farrakhan on 60 Minutes remains one of the most contentious and talked about segments in the show's history. Aired in 1996, the interview was a confrontational and intense exchange between Wallace, a seasoned journalist known for his aggressive interviewing style, and Farrakhan, the controversial leader of the Nation of Islam. Farrakhan had long been a polarizing figure in American public life, known for his incendiary rhetoric and outspoken views on race relations, politics, and religion. His leadership of the Nation of Islam, an organization advocating for black empowerment and separatism, positioned him as both a champion for many African Americans and a target for criticism from various quarters, including the mainstream media. The interview was set against the backdrop of the Million Man March, an event organized by Farrakhan in October 1995, that drew hundreds of thousands of African-American men to Washington, D.C. The march aimed to promote unity and self-improvement within the black community, but it also intensified the scrutiny and controversy surrounding Farrakhan. From the onset of the interview, Wallace adopted an assertive and challenging tone, pressing Farrakhan on his past statements and the Nation of Islam's doctrines. Wallace questioned Farrakhan about his views on Jews, white people, and his relationships with other African-American leaders. One of the most contentious moments came when Wallace directly confronted Farrakhan about his alleged anti-Semitic remarks, a charge that had long dogged the minister. Wallace quoted statements attributed to Farrakhan describing Judaism as a gutter religion and calling Adolf Hitler a great man. Farrakhan vehemently denied the context in which these quotes were often presented, arguing that his words were taken out of context or misunderstood. He defended his critiques of Jewish individuals and institutions as legitimate criticisms of specific actions and policies rather than blanket condemnations of all Jews. The interview also delved into Farrakhan's broader views on race relations in America. Wallace challenged him on the Nation of Islam's advocacy for black separatism and asked whether such views were counterproductive to racial harmony. Farrakhan responded by emphasizing the historical and ongoing injustices faced by African Americans, arguing that self-reliance and separation were necessary for the empowerment and protection of the black community. A particularly heated exchange occurred when Wallace brought up accusations that Farrakhan's rhetoric incited violence. He referenced the 1965 assassination of Malcolm X, insinuating that Farrakhan's fiery speeches might have contributed to a climate of hostility that led to Malcolm X's death. Farrakhan staunchly rejected this implication, asserting that while he had been critical of Malcolm X's departure from the Nation of Islam, he had never advocated for or endorsed violence against him.
Throughout the interview, Farrakhan maintained a calm and composed demeanor, countering Wallace's aggressive questioning with measured responses. He accused the media, including 60 minutes, of perpetuating a biased narrative that painted him and the Nation of Islam in a negative light. Farrakhan argued that his message of self-determination and empowerment for African Americans was often overshadowed by sensationalist coverage focusing on his more controversial statements. Wallace, known for his relentless pursuit of the truth and ability to hold powerful figures accountable, continued to push Farrakhan on his beliefs and the implications of his rhetoric. The tension between the two men was palpable, reflecting the broader societal divisions and conflicts over race, religion, and media representation. The fallout from the interview was significant. Reactions were polarized, with some viewers praising Wallace for his tough questioning and others accusing him of being disrespectful and biased against Farrakhan. Critics of Farrakhan saw the interview as further evidence of his divisive and inflammatory views, while his supporters viewed it as a testament to his resilience and ability to stand up to media scrutiny. The interview also sparked broader discussions about the role of media in covering controversial figures and movements. It highlighted the challenges journalists face in balancing rigorous questioning with fair representation, especially when dealing with subjects who evoke strong emotions and opinion. In retrospect, the Wallace Farrakhan interview stands as a landmark moment in 60 Minutes history. It exemplifies the program's commitment to tackling difficult and contentious issues head-on, even at the risk of controversy. The segment remains a powerful example of the intersection between media, politics, and race relations in America, illustrating the enduring complexities and challenges of these issues. The interview also underscores the importance of context and nuance in journalistic reporting. For many, the interview serves as a reminder of the need for media to engage deeply with the subjects they cover, striving for a balanced and informed perspective that captures the full scope of their views and actions. Tell us all. Because the congressman said, hey, you know, Okay, we took care of 60 Minutes, we took care of the bad publicity. Ira Rosen, a former producer for the iconic television news program 60 Minutes, has released a tell-all book, Ticking Clock, Behind the Scenes at 60 Minutes, in which he unveils some of the inner workings and controversies that marked his tenure at the show. Rosen, who spent over two decades working on the program, provides a candid and at times unflattering look at the personalities and power dynamics behind the scene. One of the prominent figures Rosen discusses is Mike Wallace, a legendary correspondent known for his aggressive interview style. Rosen paints a picture of Wallace as a complex character, brilliant yet often difficult to work with due to his ego and personal demons. Rosen recounts episodes of Wallace's inappropriate behavior, including instances of harassment, which were tolerated in the high-stakes environment of broadcast journalism at the time. Diane Sawyer, another major figure at 60 Minutes, is also featured in Rosen's narrative. While acknowledging her journalistic talent, Rosen does not shy away from detailing her ruthless ambition and willingness to manipulate situations to her advantage. He describes incidents where Sawyer undermined colleagues to secure her position and stories. Katie Couric, known for her friendly on-screen demeanor, is depicted as having a starkly different off-screen persona. Rosen claims that Couric was often calculating and competitive, traits that were necessary to thrive in the cutthroat world of network news. He recounts her strategic moves to climb the ranks within CBS and her sometimes contentious relationships with co-workers. Rosen's book offers a rare, unvarnished glimpse into the high-pressure environment of 60 Minutes, revealing the intense rivalries and personal flaws of its most celebrated journalists. By airing this dirty laundry, Rosen challenges the public's perception of these media figures and the industry, highlighting the often gritty reality behind the polished facade of television journalism. His insider perspective provides valuable insights into the complexities and ethical dilemmas faced by those in the news business. Looks like if you've got 60 minutes to spare, there's some reading you may want to do. Now let's hear from you. Are you a fan of 60 Minutes? How many minutes of your life have you been watching this classic show and this integral part of American life?